Okay, I'm starting it. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be discussing fall data reporting requirements for superintendents. My name is Ryan Cunningham. I'm the Madam Help Desk Manager here at the Maine Department of Education. I am joined uh, by Michael McCrit, who is a help desk analyst at the help desk, as well as Charlotte Ellis, who is the department's data manager. With that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Michael. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ryan. So yep, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us today, everyone. Uh, we're just going to be going over uh, some of the basics for doing the state reporting for the October, uh, I guess you call it data reporting season. Uh, there's quite a few reports um, that you folks will be tasked with uh, signing off on. So the best way uh, just to keep track of things to start off is going to be uh, using the NEO data collection and reporting calendar. So if you log into NEO, and I believe you should all have your NEO logins by this time, but um, if you for some reason do not, uh, just contact us at the help desk and we can get those set up for you. But once you're logged in, um, and you actually don't need to be logged in to get to this calendar, even the public can access it as well, but uh, it'll be under the DCNR link here on the page, or it'll be under uh, DCNR up top. Either one of those will work. And then it'll automatically bring you to the reporting calendar by default where you can choose uh, your organization, whatever district. Um, just for demonstration, we'll look at Maine Department of Education. Uh, you can filter by certain areas, um, but usually it's best to just leave these blank um, just so you can kind of see everything at a glance. And then you can just hit search. And it's going to take a moment to kind of load through. There's going to be four different windows, so it's loading each one of those. Uh, but once they're done, it'll uh, start you off with the current reports right up top. So these are all the reports that are open uh, at this very moment. Uh, you'll see that it'll have the open date for when it first opened, and then the submission due date for when uh, we're hoping to have them all submitted and certified. So um, right now, um, pretty much the reports that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we're going to have the. Uh, do you mind if I share the uh, the sheet, Ryan? That we had. Uh, with no, all that, the that's, that's fine, but it hasn't gone through the uh, final clearance. I feel confident okay. with it, but if there's anything that I'm mistaken okay. on or misquoted on, I'm sure Charlotte can speak up to that um, and you may want to let them know that this will be posted once it goes through um, all the checks right. and balances it will be posted on the data reporting instructions um, tile top and set uh, front and center it'll be called something like uh, superintendent fall reporting checklist something along those lines but yeah feel free okay. to share sure yeah just because with with ours we're going to have a lot uh, on here since we don't exactly submit reports so i just don't want to overwhelm folks because there's really only uh, a handful uh, so i'll just move this over here we'll just have it in excel and i'll blow this up a little bit for you all um so yeah essentially um the first two um that we're gonna look at are the the quarterly reports so normally there's four of these um but for now, for quarter one, we're just going to have behavior and bullying. Um, attendance and truancy normally also do at the same time. Uh, those will be coming later, uh, probably in December, maybe not even until January. And that's when we'll have you guys uh, submit the quarter one attendance and truancy. But for now, just worry about the behavior and bullying. Um, if you if you guys have any incidents that you need to have reported or once again, if you don't have any incidents, you also want to make sure that you're going in and signing off on these reports. That way we know that you've looked at it and you don't have any incidents to report and it wasn't just forgotten about or ignored. Uh, but these both will be in NEO. Um, they're open now, now that the since the first quarter has closed as of uh, the end of September. So we're hoping to have those uh, into us by the end of the month. Um, 
and all of these reports are going to have essentially the same links. There'll be a link to the instructions um, that we have for each report, as well as a link to bring you directly to the report, whether it's a NEO or if it's a web form somewhere else. Um, those are on the calendar here. So for instance, if we look at, say, the behavior report that's due, um, you can click on the details link um, to get instructions, or you can click report or form to go right to it uh, in NEO. So those are where those links are. And that's how you guys can quickly navigate to where you need to go. Um, but those ones are pretty straightforward. Um, bullying uh, incidents, those go directly into NEO, on, into the bullying module. Um, behavior incidents will go into Synergy. Um, and sometimes there there is a flow chart. Sometimes a, you know, a bullying incident can also be a behavior incident. Um, and sometimes a behavior incident can not be a bullying incident. So they, depending on what happened, they may need to go in one place or both places. But um, there's the instructions kind of spell that out for you, everyone. Um, moving on to the next one uh, is kind of the the heavy hitter will be the October 1st student enrollment count. Um, so that one, as you're probably well aware, is what we're going to be using to calculate uh, EPS uh, funding. So that one is essentially going to be a count of your um, responsible attending students as of October 1st. And that report we will actually take a brief look at just to go over a couple of key pieces. Um, so if we were to say use the October 1st link that's here under current reports, click report form, that'll open it in a new window. So you'll only see your own district or districts, whichever you've got access to. Uh, once again, um, with things changing at the beginning of the year, usually folks are contacting us to get things swapped over but if you are if you log in if you get into the report and you're not seeing a district um, that you should you know have access to just contact the help desk we can make sure your account's set up with the right permissions for who you need to have uh, so i'll just play this here once you get at, into the actual report um, this will be after you uh, click the review button um, on the report page because um, that's where you as a superintendent will need to go to sign off on these. Um, so once you click review, it'll bring you to this screen and right at the top it starts off with the special ed information. So these are going to be your counts um, of each exceptionality. Uh, just as a summary, there is a whole separate report, um, the EFS 05 part one um, that you're, you, you would also be able to look at. Um, that would just be in the student reports listing. It's kind of a subset of the October report. And the way that this will work is your special ed director is going to need to come in to this same page here for the October 1st report. And your special ed director will have a certify button um, after October 15th. That's when this report is going to actually open for certification. So right now the report's open. You can get in and start looking at it and getting the data uh, ready, but you won't actually be able to certify it until the 15th. And then at that time, uh, like I said, your director will need to come in and make sure that the special ed piece uh, for students is all correct. And then once they certify, um, it will put their, their stamp down here at the certified by section. And then you can scroll down below this and you'll get this, you'll see this lower section just underneath. And this is where it's going to list all of your schools. It'll have, you know, the attending counts, the counts for subsidy, um, equivalent instruction. Hey Mike, can I chime in real quick? Absolutely. Can you just show them where to go to ask questions? Because I mean, we're going a little hot and heavy here, and I want to make sure that if they have questions that they don't forget the questions if they're waiting to okay. be able to see those. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, so um, if uh, for those of you new to our webinars through Microsoft Teams, you'll have a window um, and up towards the top, there's going to be a little uh, voice bubble with a question mark in it. Um, and you can click on that and that'll bring up a question and answer window. And you can then just type your questions in there and then that'll shoot them over to us. We can uh, 
answer them you know live here on the webinar there is um what you what you guys will be seeing there is about a 10 20 second delay from when when i'm speaking right now you won't hear this for another 10 or 20 seconds so we'll usually after um after october here i'll take a pause and just give you guys some time to <laughs> soak it in and then ask any you know questions um, we'll try to address you know some of the quick ones um, like i said we do have a full set of instructions for each of these reports to go really into detail um, and we do have separate webinars for each of these reports as well which um, if you're still feeling a little shaky on them you know feel free to go watch sit through those webinars um, we try to keep them pretty uh pretty poignant and uh and brief as we can so i know you guys are have a lot going on right now but um, they, they can really explain them to you especially if you're brand new i would highly recommend going and watching those to kind of wrap your head around these but um yeah feel free to ask anything now we can yeah address it with you live so but um yeah good good point ryan thanks for bringing that up um so yeah coming just back uh to the october counts here um, we do want to take a brief moment just to talk about uh, the equivalent instruction field because uh, we had been seeing several districts not not quite fully understanding how they should be marking uh, their home instruction kids that come in for you know one two three you know however many classes because um, they were essentially under or over marking them um, which is which was affecting subsidy um, so you want to just make sure that the students that have been flagged in synergy as home instruction um, they'll be able to get a detail list of students you know the um, the student view for the report to see exactly who is giving you what counts um, and that's something that we'll talk about or i guess we can talk about it now that's a good point so if uh, the way you should probably approach this report is once you get into the student view of the october um, it's just going to be a, gig a gigantic list of every single student. Um, so, you know, in these cases, it's going to have, uh, you know, 22,394 students on it. But you can filter on the various columns. Um, so, you know, for you can go to the equivalent instruction column, filter on that for just to show the students that count for that um, piece. And then you can hand that list off to um, whoever would be the best suited to validate uh, the home instruction students and then you can do the same thing for you know economic status um, just filter on that list hand that list off to whoever is best equipped uh, to validate it uh, special ed you know give that to your special ed director um, and then just kind of have each one of those experts kind of give their sign off to you and say okay yep you know this is everybody that's that should be accounted for or if um if they find any issues they should um, get with your data coordinator data specialist uh, because all of this data in this report essentially is feeding from synergy uh, with the exception of a couple pieces um, you know some of the economic information we can get directly uh, from the direct cert list uh, that we'll fill in uh, but they, they'll be aware of that as well um, as well as um, you know refugee uh, status as well that also is something we just get directly but uh, but yeah give pass the the list off to the people who know them best have them kind of look through it and validate it and then once you've kind of got your collective uh, check marks from everybody uh, then then you can feel confident that when you go to certify this uh, that you're 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 giving us accurate data so but um so yeah, that's just kind of how to approach it in general and then yeah we're just kind of we're just kind of advising to pay particular attention to those uh, home instruction students to make sure that they're being um, counted properly so um yeah uh, moving on just to the next field is another big one that we always like to talk about you probably have heard us talk about it several times this year so far uh, but the economic status counts um that one where especially this year where essentially the whole state is eligible for you know free reduced lunch um, a lot of parents may not feel compelled to uh, fill out those applications this year but the economic status info that's on this october report um, this is a little bit different this this eps um, funding is not used for feeding kids 
This is more for you know having books in the library, computers in the computer lab, that type of thing. So we have the alternate um, economic form that is available up on our help desk page, which I can actually bring us over to real quick. Uh, because that is very useful if you haven't already heard about this, uh, but encouraging parents to fill out this much shorter form um, is going to be very beneficial for you and highly recommended just to get as many responses as possible um, to make sure everybody's identified. Um, and that also goes for you know the community eligible um, folks as well. Um, making sure that they fill those out is um, also important and you shouldn't just be marking everybody as free or reduced um, because it is based you know on the individual family so but this we've got it in a couple spots I believe we've got it in I know we have it in EPS guides so if you go to the EPS guides section there's this um, the FY22 alternate economic disadvantaged status form right here and this will just get you a word document I'll I'll open it real real quickly just to show you but that will download and it's just a really quick uh, form for them essentially just to capture uh, the income brackets so you know this is pretty much it just a single page um, they just fill in the brackets and then they say how many uh, which students they have meeting which guidelines in the table sign in date that's it um, and then your data person can enter this into synergy um, once again this is not this doesn't have anything to do with free reduced lunch this is purely just to collect that economic status um, field which happens to use the same exact uh, income brackets as the free reduced lunch which is why um, rather than asking for the same information twice, you can just use those forms to give us your economic status information, kind of how that that works. So, um, yep, just wanted to show you guys this very helpful, critical resource. But we'll come back out of that and once again. This was just on our help desk page under the EPS guides tile and then the FY22 form. Make sure you do use the 22 because I think there was a couple of uh, income brackets that kind of had minor tweaks to them from last year. So, but that is that on our help desk page. Um, one thing we can talk about too while we're right here, because um, since we're in October, um, right now, um, the the October report is refreshing every hour. Um, and that's shown by this timer here on our help desk page. So in another 40 minutes, uh, the report's going to update with data that was put into Synergy. Um, and that'll keep happening um, right up until we get to the 15th and certifications are open. Then this automatic hourly refresh will stop. And then the only way to get your report to be refreshed is if you use a refresh data button that will actually be right on the page of October. It's going to be right right about here on the screen next to the certify. There'll be a refresh. Um, it'll, be, it'll say decertify ref slash refresh data. So if folks have been working on your report, you know your data person's been uh, putting new things into Synergy, getting things ready. Um, if it is after the 15th, you will need to you or them, uh, though you'll both have access to it. Uh, you can go in and just click that decertify refresh data button that basically is just going to put up a flag to say hey um, this my district has some updates that we need to get pulled over and then at the next um, top of the hour the synergy changes will get pulled into your report so uh, it's just something to be aware of um, you don't need to contact us at all uh, for refreshes you can just come right to your report hit your button and things will automatically move over and when you when they open the student details view, it will show the last time it was refreshed uh, right at the top of that detail page. So uh, that's just another key thing to to understand about how this report goes. So you know if it's October 20th and you're not seeing any of the changes you've been working on coming over, 
Uh, it's probably just because it needs to be refreshed and you can go and hit that button to, to kick that off. So. Um, I think that is really about it um, that we should spend time on here. I'll kind of open it up, uh, you know, for questions about October. If anybody has anything, you know, specific they want to hear about. Um, but yeah, once once everything is good, um, you folks as a superintendent will have a button uh, to certify and submit to DOE down here. Uh, the button will not be visible until after the 15th um, and it also won't be uh, clickable until after once again your special ed director has clicked their button up above to certify the special ed counts then yours will light up you can send it over to us um, we will go through a brief kind of check-in process we'll kind of give it a once over make sure we don't see anything jumping out at us um, that we that we think may be incorrect um, if if it looks if it passes that muster though we'll we'll accept it, and that's when uh, the accepted by accepted date will f will populate by one of us here at the DOE, and uh, and that will complete it. Um, another thing to uh, that we've added in that's kind of helpful is we'll compare um, what your October counts were in the previous year to what they are this year. Uh, so we know it's you know still early folks are still putting in data, but for this example that we have, you know we can see that this particular district has 122 less economic status counts than they did last year. Uh, so we put that in bold and that's just kind of to give put a put a spotlight on it, give say, hey, you know this is pretty substantially different than what it was prior. So that might be something to look at. Um, once again, it's not going to keep you from certifying it, but we're just trying to, like I said, you know, give you guys as much of a heads up when things are uh, maybe not looking as correct. So, um, and then, you know, the same thing for their EL counts. However, this has been a 30% increase. So that's just a substantial increase over last year. Same thing with their pre-K uh, student counts. So, uh, once again, that may be normal to say, hey, yeah, we we added a whole, you know, two other pre-K classes this year, so that makes sense. Um, you know, nothing to be concerned with. It's just, yeah, us just seeing a large difference and just bolding it. So, um, using these can be very helpful, and you know, just being aware of what changes you guys have had as a an organization. Um, sometimes these will make sense. So. Um, and then likewise, we'll also have a breakdown by grade, uh, various grade brackets here. So we've got just the PK students, K through two, K through eight, nine, 12, and then everyone PK 12. So you can kind of see how many students are um, being counted in those various brackets. So, but um, yeah, while I've been going over that, we haven't had any New questions come in. So we'll uh, give it maybe just another minute uh, just for October or um, you know behavior and bullying. If anybody's had any questions about that, we did have one come through. But I'll kind of get ready to move on to the next report here. And so yeah, once again, this will be Actually, October. I think that is be. We're trying to, yeah, we want to have October. It's going to open on the 15th. We're hoping to have those in by the end of the month um, by 10 30. So, yeah, no new questions. So, yeah, now the next report that's kind of uh, up right now uh, is going to be the dropout certification report. So, this report. Um, essentially is going to be looking for students that were enrolled with your district in uh, last school year. And if they were expected to return to school this fall and they have not been enrolled in any school on October 1st, then they meet the federal definition of uh, what they collect for dropouts. So, um, that report is available and open right now. Um, we've got you know the instructions for that. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's once again, yeah, just going to be looking for students that should be enrolled right now 
um, or if they were um, purposefully exited as a dropout, uh, you know, prior to the October 1st, 2021 uh, reporting period. Um, and they were that was happened any time in the last school year or at the beginning of this school year. Uh, then they'll show up on that report. Um, and that does apply to all compulsory age students. So anyone six, um, well, and, all, and also above uh, compulsory age as well, if they were, you know, dropped out, discontinued, or went to adult ed, things like that. Um, but yeah, you can you can have, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade dropouts, uh, essentially, if, uh, if they're not back in school. So feel free to go look through that report. Um, it's usually fairly straightforward. Um, you know, that data, once again, everything in there is pulling from Synergy. So if you see something that's incorrect, um, chat with your data specialist to see what they've put in the synergy. And then if they if they determine that something's wrong um, or if they need to make a correction, you know, they can email, call the help desk and we can uh, get through that with them. Um, we do just have uh, just a couple questions come in. So they're asking, um, how do we access this Excel spreadsheet? Um, as Ryan said, he's going to be um, kind of we're, we'll be polishing this up. This is kind of a rough draft, but I wanted to be able to show it to you here just to kind of work through some of this. Um, and that'll this will be available up on our help desk page. Uh, so if you go to main.gov slash DOE. And then if you go to data and reporting in this navigation bar, you can go down to help desk. And that will get you to our page. And we're going to have this posted. Uh, did you say under data reporting instructions, Ryan? Yeah, I'll make sure it's front and center. It'll be the first thing once you click on that data reporting um, tile. OK. So yeah, we'll probably we'll, we'll have it posted. There'll be a link up here, you know, superintendent, um, you know, October reporting season, you know, something like that. Uh, so it'll be available up there for download pretty, pretty much probably very soon after this webinar is wrapped up. And I was just noticing a 1115 date on a previous slide. Um, do you? I'm not sure which report you might have been referring to. I did adjust the in here. I did adjust October. It this did originally say 1115 as a due date, but that will be the due date for October is the end of the month, uh, October 30th. At least for that particular report, some of these some of these are due on 11 15, um, namely the staff reports. So the uh, special ed staff and then the regular staff, those are due on the 11 15, which we'll be getting to those in just a moment. But um, yeah, this did originally say 11 15, but yeah, it will be 10 30. Um, but yeah, so that would be just kind of the. As far as uh, talking about the dropout reporting, um, once again, that's just going to be under student reports. Uh, so in the, within this list, if you go down a little bit, there will be the dropout certification report. Um, and then you can get to that right here. And uh, see which who's being tallied. But um, yep. Uh, that's essentially the dropout report. That one, uh, once again, uh, hoping to have those in. Uh, that one's coming up pretty soon. We want to have those in by the 15th. So you guys will have 10 days to just get those submitted. Uh, once again, just yeah, you go in, there'll be a uh, certify and submit to DOE button uh, once everything is uh, correct on there. Um, and so that'll bring us uh, to the staff certification. Uh, so that's open right now. Um, you'll want to that report basically is having whoever manages your NEO staff um, going in, making sure that everyone's staff assignments have been updated for the current school year. Um, and then once you know the folks that no longer work there have been removed, the new folks have been added, salaries have been updated. Um, if you're a public school, if you're a private school, you don't do salaries. Um, once all of that is done, you can go into Neo staff. And there is. Or once again, you can use the calendar. 
but here's the staff certification. Um, once again, we've got detailed instructions here. If you hit report form, it'll bring you into staff. Uh, we'll go over once again to just uh, our, our organization briefly. So here's the report. Uh, make sure that it's set to the current fiscal year. Sometimes it'll get set back to one of these previous years. Um, and then this will basically just tally up all of your positions and FTEs um, of those positions. You There is now a link as well to that you can click on to view the folks that are showing that are coming up in that position. Um, we just kind of list them all here. You scroll down, um, you'll have the district roles. Um, you'll also need to make sure that all of these are set before it'll allow you to certify. Um, we did add a staff data specialist uh, very recently, so that's a new position. Um, and these district roles essentially are just points of contact uh, for us and the public. So if there's, um, if we need to get in touch, you know, if we have a synergy question, um, we're going to go look up who your listed student data specialist is, and uh, we're going to use the email and or phone number that was put into their staff assignment to contact them. Uh, the same goes um, for the public. You know, if the public goes into the contact search and they want to figure out, you know, who's your librarian or your director of technology, um, it's going to be, it's going to show them who you've chosen in these district roles. So you want to make sure that these are accurate and that these are the best people uh, to field questions about that subject. Um, and they will all need to be selected before you can certify. Um, there will also be a couple other conditions for certifying your staff. Um, Mike, can I chime in real quick? You also sure. want to make sure that the people you designate in these district roles are aware that you're designating them because <clears throat> if we have like a third party research group that wants to offer opportunities to McKinney Vento liaisons or whatever, they're going to get communicated to and it's only right for you to ensure that they know that they're going to come up under these district rules because you put them in as such. Right. Yeah, very good point. And uh, we did just yeah get a question that is uh, a good one. Um, so they're saying, uh, yeah, sometimes a name will not pop up on the list of possible designees. Uh, where do I access the place to add people to that list? So these designees, when you go to, you, there'll be a drop down for you to choose somebody for this role. Um, and that is going to be pulled directly from who is in um, NEO staff with a staff assignment with the district. Um, some of these um, are a little bit picky. And for instance, your director of technology, um, that can only be somebody that's been put in as a director of technology, um, technology integration coordinator. Um, it, it may just be those two. Um, so there, there is some conditions to some of these. Uh, some of them there isn't. Um, you know, like your integrated pest management coordinator, um, that can be anybody um, and so on. But things like nurses, librarians, those can only be people entered as a nurse or librarian. Um, or in the in the cases of some districts, uh, the superintendent can also be chosen for any of these positions um, for, you know, some that are just tuition only or or something or very small, you know, things like that. But um, but yeah, that's a good question. So if you're not seeing somebody, um, you'd want to go pull up your NEO staff listing um, by going into manage staff and then doing SAU search. And that will show you your your whole list of everybody that you have currently. Um, if you're not seeing that person, then that means you need to to add them by doing a staff search. Um, you know, having your person go in, you'll need their full social security number um, to you know be able to edit them and get that assignment set up. So um, yeah, no, normally if you if you have somebody that manages you know staff, they would be the ones to do that. And that is also who would you would want to list as your staff uh, data specialist, that new position. So whoever typically enters people, um, that's who you would want to list here. Um, but yeah, once 
once uh, yeah, the designees are all set, um, the other conditions for certifying this is that you can't have any pending positions um, uh, in your staff at the moment. Um, everybody's got to be uh, locked and uh, and set. Um, and one thing that is new for this year um, at the request of districts is uh, let me I'll actually go in here. If you go into your staff list. Um, so you'll see that we have actually set everybody's positions uh, to in progress automatically. So by default, nobody is active once we roll over the school year. Uh, so you'll need your staff data specialist to kind of come in um, and they'll they can click on the staff ID and update any relevant information or end the person's assignment if needed. Um, and then they will just hit uh, submit on the assignment. Uh, make sure they don't hit save as pending because um, that just kind of still leaves them in limbo. They need to actually hit submit on the assignment. And then what that will do is switch the position status uh, to active rather than in progress. Um, and this way we make sure that we get completely accurate data for you know salaries, uh, which does affect um, you know, certain funding pieces. Um, as well as you know, the other big issue was districts were just had had people that had been listed as their staff for for years and they hadn't worked there. Um, so this is a way to ensure that people are getting cleaned up um, and that you guys are getting uh, the, the appropriate funding for everything. So uh, that is new for this year, so you'll need to have somebody go through, make sure that all of your staff are resubmitted um, and accurate. Uh, once again, that was at the request of districts. Um, that way they know, because uh, prior to this, they had no way to know who they had um, updated. It just showed everybody is active, you know, every year. So they, they couldn't tell who they had um, updated or not. So by doing this, everyone goes to in progress, and then once they update them, they go to active. So um, it's just a way to, to keep track of that and get better better data. Um, so that's one piece for the staff report. Those will all need to be updated. Um, the other part is if there, there's on certain assignments, um, usually related to special education, um, there's a there's a question where if you put them in with um, as a instructing special ed, um, there's a follow up question that asks, you know, how much, um, what percentage of their time is spent with special ed or you know, are they are they highly qualified for special ed? Um, sometimes those questions are left unanswered on an assignment, and if so, um, it'll also keep you from certifying the report. So to find those people, if it's not letting you certify and there's no more, you know, in progress folks, you can have them go over to the um, either one of these staff detail reports, either courses or FTE. And that'll just show you a big list of all the um, the staff, and then there's uh, the farthest right column on that report is a uh, is a needs review column. Um, I could probably load this real quick just to give a crash course, but uh, that needs review column. If there's anybody in there that says yes, they need review. Uh, then that's that's the person you need to go look at, and they basically just pull up their staff assignment on the screen, answer the question that was missing, and then resubmit it. Um, so it's yeah, it's this far right column here needs review. So yeah, if you have anybody that says yes in this column, uh, just make sure just get them updated. Then your staff certification button will light up. Um, Yep, and then we just had a question come in. So if we uh, if we had a staff member resign after the start of school, do we still report them? Uh, so no, you would want to go in um, and basically end their assignment for whatever their last day uh, was. And then uh, due to that, that will remove them from your staff report, which basically is going to be a snapshot of um, of the staff listing when you click that certify button. So it should be uh, staff that were active as of the day you certified. So uh, good question. Um, and that that also kind of goes to the flip side. Um, you know, if you have staff that are waiting to start, um, so if if they are actually not providing any um, 
I guess, work or service, you know, to the district yet. If they're not working in a school, you know, they're waiting on a background check or their credentials or something. You know, there's some reason that they're not actually working for you yet. Um, you will be able to go in and create their assignment that will be starting at a later date. Um, you know, when you go to set their assignment, say their start date is December 1st, you can go into NEO and create that assignment and basically get that slated. Uh, but they are not going to count in your um, staff certification because they're not active with you at this time. Um, and likewise, if if they are waiting on a background check or, or certifications or something, but they are actually in the school doing the job, you would want to put them in staff because we need to know that um, regardless of their certifications. You know, if they are in a school performing work, we need to know about it and they need to be entered into staff uh, regardless. And then the uh, certifications and things, those that's kind of just a separate piece. Um, so that that may cause them to show up as um, you know not fully qualified, um, but you know that that is what it is. If if you have them teaching and they don't have their certifications yet, you know that that's accurate then. So, um, but yeah, good good question. Um, and that's pretty much um, probably more detail on staff than we needed here. But uh, just wanted to go over it because that well that one that one is uh, not terribly intuitive uh, with all the various pieces. So um, that is the staff report. Um, the other thing to know about the staff report is we have now tied the special ed staff, um, the EFS 05 part two uh, special ed staff is now tied to that report. And normally these were separate and they would do the special ed staff later in the year, but now we're doing them at the same time uh, because it makes more sense this way. Uh, so your your special ed director will need to go in and get their special ed staff uh, straightened out and make sure that everything in there is accurate and then they will certify their own report for their special ed staff. Um, and you will not be able to certify the district's total staff until they have done that piece. So you'll need to you may need to coordinate a bit with them. It's much, much like October where they certify the special ed students, then you certify the total. Uh, they'll you know, certify a special ed staff, then you'll certify the total. So it's the same idea. And um, you you also won't have your button lit up to certify until they've done that. So that could be a, a fourth reason um, why you can't certify it. Um, and you want to just yeah check with them. Uh, before doing that, and that's We'll kind of cover that piece um, as well. So right in between those two staff reports, we have uh, just the career technical education CTE October student counts. Uh, this will be a report that um, you folks as superintendents won't necessarily sign off on, but your CTE director will have access to this in student data. This will be listed right alongside all the other reports. So once you get in here, there's a CTE October student count. Uh, laid up in this report to show how many are in the programs, um, and that'll once again be completed by the this by the CTE director. Um, they'll be completing those and that's just kind of more of a simple count um, of students based on program that they're in. So um, that's more or less just that report. Just kind of be aware that that's also happening. Some of you may also be the ones to sign off on those. But um, is that one? That one is due also by the end of the month. If I'm not mistaken, yes. So that's open now, available at the end of the month. Uh, we just covered the special ed staff. Uh, so really just the last two that we wanted to mention. Uh, once again, these are reports that no, don't necessarily need to be signed off by you folks as superintendents, um, but it's the transportation reports that are open right now and due very shortly. Um, it's the EFT 24, 
um, and then the safety and training EFT 21. So these two are open right now, due in 10 days. Those will be completed by your transportation director. Uh, so just be aware that those are uh, up right now and you can maybe check with them to see where they're at on uh, completing those uh, if you guys are um, operating transportation. So uh, yeah, that is more or less um, the reports that we've got right now. So uh, it's kind of the busiest time. But yeah, if you guys have any extra questions, we'll kind of just open it up here at the end. And then also, you know, Ryan and Charlotte, if you guys had anything else you wanted to add, uh, feel free. I will also um, just go over as well. So this uh, webinar, uh, it is going to get posted alongside the that spreadsheet. Um, well, not directly with it, but it will be on our webinars and presentations tile of the help desk page. So if um, if perhaps you're you know sitting in for a superintendent and you think that they you know should should have a look at this, um, you can come down to our webinars and presentations tile here. And this will take a couple of days probably to get posted because um, we'll need to do the transcribing, get the questions and answers um, posted with it as well. But yeah, under the 2122 webinars, we'll add in this uh, superintendent webinar here so you'll be able to view it. Um, and yeah, we'll have that available probably in a, a couple of days. So um, the slide deck though that or they the, the spreadsheet that'll be available very shortly. That's a simple one to post. But um, yeah, we haven't had any questions come in. I know we kind of covered uh, a fair bit of ground here. Try not to get too detailed. Uh, like I said, a few. If you guys need a more in-depth refreshers, feel free to just grab the instructions. Um, those are also available. If you don't want to go through the calendar, you can just go to our data reporting instructions uh, section here. And each of the reports, um, you know, behavior, dropouts, um, October. Uh, October will be getting updated here soon and we'll have it in here. Uh, but yeah, all of the reports are right here if you want the detailed uh, walkthrough. And then likewise, uh, if you guys have any questions you're doing the report or need to get a hold of us at the help desk, we've got all of our contact info out front. Uh, Metams.helpdesk at main.gov, our phone number. Um, so yeah, feel free to contact us if you see something strange or something's not working. Uh, things are looking pretty solid right now. Uh, knock on wood. We're not having any uh, real reported issues, so things should be working pretty smoothly. And I think uh, with that, I think we can probably wrap it up, and give you guys back uh, 10 minutes. Okay, thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thank you.